Vikings are coming! To BBC America, that is, in an epic new series called The Last Kingdom, which is about the struggle between the native Anglo-Saxons and the Viking invaders over who would rule England, with plenty of stabbings, betrayals, surprising plot twists, and even a bit of snogging. So I thought we could squat up in preparation, because as it turns out, there was actually much more than beards and brutality when it came to the Vikings. The Viking Invasion the Viking invasions occurred between 800 and 1150 AD, when over 200,000 people left Scandinavia, which we now know as Denmark, Norway and Sweden, to raid and settle in other lands. And England was on their list. In 866, they captured the city of York and made it their capital. At the time, it looked like all of England would fall to the Vikings. And then Alfred of Wessex came along, who would later be known as Alfred the Great. He took to the throne at the age of 21, schooled himself in guerrilla warfare, and beat the Vikings at their own game. He used hit-and-run tactics to not only attack their fortifications, but also steal provisions. After Alfred gave the Vikings a good trouncing, a treaty was signed with the Viking leader Guthrum, splitting England between the Vikings and the English, with the Viking territory being known as the Danelaw. Savages the Vikings were like super into weapons, such as swords, spears, axes, shields, knives and helmets, which actually had no pointy horns by the way. They preferred to fight on foot, only riding on horseback as a mode of transport to the battlefield. The Vikings were, to put it bluntly, a savage bunch, although rather inventive with it. For example, the captured King Edmund of East Anglia was used for archery practice, and the Archbishop of Canterbury was pelted with ox bones until dead. In a ritual killing known as the Blood Eagle, the victim's chest was cut open, his ribs split and lungs pulled out from the inside of his ribcage and pinned to his chest to look like the wings of an eagle. Wow. I think the message that we're basically getting from this is don't mess with the Norse dudes, okay? Culture and society. Between rowing their beloved longboats and decapitating enemies, Viking men must have been a pretty smelly bunch, right? Well, guess again. Turns out Vikings were actually the original metrosexuals, with tweezers, razors and combs being found at excavation sites. Well, those beards aren't going to tame themselves, are they? And Vikings liked to bathe at least once a week, which was a heck of a lot more than other Europeans of their day. Also, to conform to their culture's beauty ideals, brunette Vikings would use a strong soap with a high lye content, which would bleach their hair, and would apparently help keep head lice at bay. Win-win. Viking women enjoyed more freedom than other women at the time. Although they could still be married at 12 and were expected to stay at home, sometimes they were allowed to go to war, and as long as they weren't thralls, aka slaves, they could inherit property and request a divorce, which at the age of 12 might sound like a rather appealing option. We're known nowadays for speaking the Queen's English, but look a little closer and you'll notice the Vikings played a big part in not only our ancestry, but also our language. Often settling in areas already occupied by the Anglo-Saxons, Vikings would change the names of the places they found difficult to pronounce. For example, the Saxon name for the city of York was Ethelwick, or something close to that, which didn't exactly roll off the tongue for the Danes, so they renamed it Jorvik. They also gave us several words to describe the bleak weather, which, especially in the north of England, can be shrouded in fog with strong gusts of wind and lots of clouds. See, even the Vikings like to talk about the weather. They also gave us the words Thursday and Hell, which were both named after Norse gods. Norse gods. The Vikings worshipped a plethora of gods, including Odin, the Allfather, a shaman-like figure who was symbolic of war and death, but also poetry, music and magic. Thor, son of Odin, god of thunder and protector of mankind. As well as his famous hammer, Thor also possessed a magical belt and iron gloves, which if you ask me, is a pretty strong look. Loki was a trickster god and a shapeshifter. Hel was the ruler of the Norse underworld. Freya was not only a beautiful figure, goddess of love and fertility, she was also associated with war, battle, wealth, death and magic. She's basically the whole package. Over time, many Vikings settled in England, converted to Christianity, and lived peacefully side by side the locals, and even married them. Eventually, the number of Viking raids began to dwindle, and by the end of the Viking Age, it is safe to say that most people living in England were half English, half Danish. 
So it's highly probable that many of us Brits, and some Americans for that matter, will have a great 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 you get the idea. Viking uncle or two lurking in the old family tree. Cool, huh? What do you love about the Vikings? Remember to check out The Last Kingdom on BBC America, and why not let us know your favourite characters in the comments. Follow us on Twitter at Anglophenia and like our Facebook page too. Thanks for watching. That one is worth its weight in silver. There's no way you'd want to miss this one. Loki at that one. No fighting over this one, please.